It's Holy Thursday, but not a soul will be in Notre Dame Cathedral. Instead, the city is talking about rebuilding the church and the Catholic faith. I'm Michelle Powers. That story is next. A man carrying gasoline canisters inside St. Patrick's Cathedral arrested and charged with attempted arson. The Holy Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper will be celebrated by Brooklyn's Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio tonight. It commemorates two key parts of the Catholic faith. At the Vatican on Holy Thursday, the Pope blessed the holy oils before heading off to a prison. The news starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Fawbless. The rebuilding of Notre Dame is a vow Catholics around the world are making on this Holy Thursday, and there are several new developments tonight. Investigators now think an electrical short circuit most likely caused the Notre Dame Inferno. Officials haven't released any details about the electric problem or the ongoing investigation. Currently, the interior of the 12th century building is being shored up with wooden planks. The hundreds of firefighters who saved the famous symbol of the Catholic faith from total destruction were thanked this morning by French President Emmanuel Macron. He said because of them, the worst had been avoided. About 500 firefighters fought the flames for nine hours in the battle to save Notre Dame. They will get an honor medal for their courage and devotion. And new details about the crown of thorns relic that was saved from the flames. The heroic Catholic chaplain who saved the crown from the Notre Dame Inferno is crediting firefighters. Father Jean-Marc Fournier said they broke open the reliquary containing the sacred object, allowing him to remove it to safety. Father Fournier is the fire department chaplain, and one member said the priest showed no fear when he rushed into the burning cathedral. Holy Thursday has taken on a different meaning this year because of the Notre Dame Inferno. Currents News' Michelle Powers is on the scene in Paris as the city and the world vow to raise the famous Catholic landmark from the ashes. Michelle. Liz, if the fire never happened, this scene would be a very different place. Instead of barricades, we'd hear church bells and thousands would be walking into Holy Thursday Mass. No one is sure when that will happen again. Arnaud Bothion remembers when he first saw Notre Dame light up. I was deeply moved. An ambassador for the Knights of Columbus in France, Arnaud was behind the popular project that attracted hundreds of thousands. But now he's unsure if the cathedral will ever light again. Through this dramatic event, there is this question, what does God want to do? To tell us. Nearly one billion in donations has poured in for the vast restoration. Though a sadness fills Arnaud's heart, he sees the fire as a sign from God and an opportunity to evangelize. Time is a, a huge opportunity for us to evangelize uh, because many people from abroad, many people from France who said, wow, they will come back. Sounds of rebuilding can already be heard at the cathedral and a host of specialized artisans and skilled workmen from around the world will soon meet in Paris. Rebuilders. We are rebuilders. President Macron is pledging to restore the cathedral on a five-year plan. But that is at odds with art historian Louis Monoranch. But it can be lived and experienced by Catholics as a sign. He says restoring the jewel of Gothic architecture could take much longer. When you have a real historical monument like that, you can't be uh, too in a hurry. You have to do it properly and to respect history uh, is also um, accepting that it can last years and decades. Cathedrals often took centuries to build, Notre Dame itself taking 200 years, all to eventually collapse. I wasn't sure it wasn't a dream, a nightmare actually. Louis says the damage to the cathedral is the worst in its history, even worse than damages made during the French Revolution and World War II. Around the cathedral, many people are mentioning a new sense of resiliency, one like never before, a resilience to not only rebuild the church, but to restore the faith. We have to rebuild not only the structure of the cathedral, not only the building, but we have to rebuild the church together. The deep purpose of a cathedral is to protect and to celebrate the body of Christ. We re really never need to forget that. 
Though the fire has stopped here at Notre Dame, many believe that it has ignited a faith in the Catholic Church here in Paris. Michelle Powers, back to you, Liz. Michelle, before I let you go, big question is when the cathedral is rebuilt, what will it look like? What are people saying about this? How do they envision it? Right now, there's actually a debate between those who think that maybe it'll have a modern touch and those who want it to look exactly the same. I've talked to people on both ends. They believe that every time a cathedral is rebuilt, that it does have a different look to it. But a lot of people say Notre Dame, an old lady, cannot withstand that. Now, events for Holy Week were supposed to be at the cathedral. Have new plans been made that you know of? Yeah, there are new plans. Everything has been moved to different churches that are within a mile radius. The Easter Mass is expected to have over 2,000 people at it, and that'll be just a mile north of where we are right now. All right, Michelle, thank you very much for that report. Thank you. And stay with Currents News for the latest developments on the rebuilding of Notre Dame. Michelle Powers will continue to report on the situation from Paris through the rest of the week. With more on how the faithful in Paris are adapting to life without their beloved cathedral is Crux faith and culture correspondent Claire Jean Grave from outside Notre Dame in Paris. Claire, welcome. Always so good to talk to you. Same here, Liz. Claire, Notre Dame's near destruction has been an incredibly painful one for the entire world to witness. But how exactly is the Parisian Catholic community coping with all of this? You know, Liz, you would expect that coming here you would see a depressed city, sad for the loss of their lady, their center beating heart of Notre Dame. But instead, what I saw, especially in the Catholic community, starting with the Chrism Mass on Wednesday, was a great sense of hope. And not just among Catholics, but also with people of other faiths. This sense that this is a moment of rebirth and renewal. We've spoken to people who are teaching at schools. We've spoken to people who work in crowdfunding for the church. And everyone seems to find this as an opportunity to start back from the roots and rebuild their cathedral from the ground up. And speaking of that, can you tell us more about these rebuilding and these funding efforts? Well, as we all know, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, like all cathedrals that were built after 19, before 1901, actually belong to the Parisian state. That means that it's up to the Parisian state to take care of um, keeping and constructing and maintaining the building. So most of the costs will be taken on by the French state, thanks to also generous donations from all over the world. But when it comes to the inside, the relics, the pieces of art that are special to the Catholic Church, that's a responsibility of the Parisian, um, of the Parisian diocese. And also we've seen the Vatican and several dioceses around the world trying to contribute and help in recreating it. Lay people will have a key role in this moment in trying to bring back Notre Dame to its great splendor. And Claire, you attended the Chrism Mass that you spoke about earlier on Wednesday, and it was at a new home for Paris's faithful. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, the Archbishop of Paris, uh, Opetit, spoke to the community the first time that all French faithful reunited once again to pray together and prepare for, for Easter. And he told them that this is a moment to rebuild the church, but not just the cathedral that they had watched with tears in their eyes fall and, and burn away on Monday, but also the church itself. Let's not forget that France has been through some of the most systematically horrible moments for just not the Catholic community, but for the whole world. Think of the death of Jacques Amel, who was killed in his church by a terrorist. Think about the, the, the terrorists who tried to attack several parts of the town. Think about just the suffering of the Catholics in this city who feel that they could never really express their voice and are often called the zombie Catholics. This is a moment for Parisians and Al Petit remind, reminded that to all the faithful to not just rebuild the cathedral but to rebuild the church and to do that they need to go back to their roots. Claire, as always, your perspective and insight are always spot on. Thank you so much. It's great talking to you, my friend. Thank you so much, Liz. Donors who want to contribute to the rebuilding of Notre Dame are being warned tonight to be on guard for scammers. The experts emphasize that there are many crooks trying to steal your money through bogus online operations. The Better Business Bureau says wait until an official fund is created. The French government plans to set up two, one for domestic donations and the other for international contributions. And the rebuilding of Notre Dame Cathedral will be highlighted at a Brooklyn church on Good Friday. The priests at St. Paul and St. Agnes will recite the Passion of the Lord in French as a tribute to Notre Dame. The service begins at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. The church is located at 433 Sackett Street. 
Just days after the Notre Dame Inferno in New York, a man is under arrest after he walked into St. Patrick's Cathedral last night with two gas containers and lighters. Police say they were able to detain him as he tried to get away. Currents News' Tim Harfman was at St. Patrick's when Cardinal Dolan spoke about the scare. Police arrested the man after he allegedly carried gasoline canisters, lighter fluid and lighters into St. Patrick's Cathedral. The apparent threat on the heels of the Notre Dame disaster had Cardinal Dolan talking about security this morning at St. Patrick's. Our people were suspicious, walked the man out, immediately called the police department. They apprehended him and now uh, he's secure. So the system works. Does that mean it's fail safe? No, but that's why we come to church, to pray for uh, God's protection. 37-year-old Mark Lamparello of New Jersey is charged with attempted arson, reckless endangerment, and trespassing. Police said Lamparello parked a minivan outside St. Patrick's around 8 o'clock last night, then entered with two large containers filled with gasoline, two bottles of lighter fluid, and two lighters. Cathedral security stopped Lamparello inside the entrance. Monsignor Robert Ritchie is St. Patrick's rector and says security guards and surveillance cameras help prevent situations. Almost every church has emotionally disturbed people come to, to them. And the bigger the church, the more people that come. And so it is something that we're aware of. Worshippers visiting St. Patrick's today were shocked. This kind of things uh, make you feel insecure. I would have hated to have seen that happen here of what just happened back in Paris. Like, it's just devastating. All this comes as Cardinal Dolan joined Interfaith and other leaders to announce a fundraiser for Notre Dame Cathedral. It's called the From St. Patrick's to Notre Dame Fund. The Cardinal pointed to the role cathedrals play in helping the poor. As Pope Francis says, the poor, the poor have a right to beauty. The poor have a right to a sanctuary. The poor have a right to, to have their spirits, which are often crushed down, lifted up. That's what Notre Dame does. That's what St. Patrick's does. So in a way, this is almsgiving. And the From St. Patrick's to Notre Dame fund has already surpassed $100,000. Outside St. Patrick's Cathedral, Tim Harfman, Currents News. Brooklyn's Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio will celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. The service commemorates when Christ instituted the Holy Eucharist, and it will be broadcast live following this newscast. Currents News Emily Druby is at the Cathedral Basilica of St. James in downtown Brooklyn with a preview. Emily. Liz, preparations are well underway for that Mass, which is being celebrated here tonight by Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio. Now, earlier today, we spoke with the Co-Cathedral's Rector, Father Peter Papora, about the significance of the Mass. Father Papora working to get the Co-Cathedral ready for one of the most important Catholic liturgies of the year, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. We've kind of formally concluded the period of Lent, which is the period of preparation, and now we're entering into these final days, which celebrate the central mysteries of our faith, of the dying and the rising of Jesus Christ. The Mass is celebrated on Holy Thursday and commemorates both the institution of Holy Eucharist and the beginning of the priesthood. Father Papora explains this Mass will look similar to a typical Sunday, but with some crucial additions. Because we're focusing on these important themes, like the, the gift of the Eucharist from Christ at the Last Supper and the example of uh, humility and service, there are some aspects of the liturgy that are a little bit different. Father Papora explains that those differences have to do with the transition from one set of mysteries to another. Tonight, celebrating in joy uh, the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of the priesthood, but tomorrow we're commemorating the death and the suffering of Christ. Uh, so there's a bit of a transition at, at the end of Mass. So after Mass, we remove the Blessed Sacrament from the body of the church. Then the Blessed Sacrament is reserved at another location called the Altar of Repose. Parishioners will be able to continue the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament well into the night. And then after the church is stripped, we remove the linens, we remove the flowers, we remove the candles. So there's a simplicity uh, to the time we enter into tomorrow. Those items will remain hidden away until Easter Sunday. There will be no Mass on Good Friday or Holy Saturday until that night's Easter Vigil. In downtown Brooklyn, Emily Druby, Currents News. Back to you, Liz. Emily, is there a reason the Mass of the Lord's Supper is at night and not earlier in the day? Liz, the Mass is supposed to take place in the evening because that's when Passover began. Liz? 
All right, Emily, thank you so much. Net TV is the place to be for Holy Week coverage. Special live programs will be televised throughout Christianity's most important time of the year. Tonight's Currents News will be immediately followed by the Mass of the Lord's Supper celebrated by Bishop DiMarzio at St. James Basilica at 7 p.m. On Good Friday, The Way of the Cross will be televised live from St. James Basilica at 10 a.m. with Bishop DiMarzio offering an opening prayer and reflection. The Passion of the Lord will be commemorated at St. James. Live coverage begins at 3 p.m. Currents News airs at a special time, 6.30 p.m., ahead of the Way of the Cross with Pope Francis presiding from Rome at 7 p.m. And the Easter Vigil from the Vatican will be televised at 2.30 p.m. The Vigil at St. James Basilica will get underway at 8. The full Holy Week television schedule is posted at net ny.tv. There's a lot more news headed your way. The Mueller report was released today. While many thought it would put an end to the collusion accusations against the president, the controversy is far from over. Pope Francis spent his Holy Thursday in a prison. He washed and kissed the feet of inmates. Stay tuned for the missionary of Wall Street. He's trying to bring people back to the church. And do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at desalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number 718-517-3122. We'll be right back. After a nearly two-year investigation of President Trump, the Mueller report is now public. The report concluded that there was no collusion between then-candidate Trump and the Russians in the 2016 election, but there's still plenty of controversy to go around. Kristen Holmes has the story. The Russian government sponsored efforts to illegally interfere with the 2016 presidential election, but did not find that the Trump campaign or other Americans colluded in those efforts. Special counsel Robert Mueller's partially redacted report noting the Trump campaign showed interest in emails stolen from Democrats by Russians meant to hurt Hillary Clinton, but found no evidence of a crime. That is something that all Americans can and should be grateful to have confirmed. On the question of obstruction of justice, Mueller is less clear. His report identifying 10 instances where the president or his aides may have attempted to curtail the investigation, <laughs> including firing former FBI director James Comey. The evidence developed by the special counsel is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. According to the report, once the president found out about Mueller's appointment, he said, quote, this is the end of my presidency. That was not the reaction of the president that day when I was there. Today, just moments after the report's release, Trump claimed victory. No collusion, no obstruction. <laughs> Congressional Democrats wanting more answers, calling on Mueller to testify publicly. The special counsel made clear that he did not exonerate the president, and the responsibility now falls to Congress to hold the president accountable for his actions. In Washington, Kristen Holmes, Currents News. More now on Holy Thursday, Pope Francis celebrating the Mass of the Lord's Supper at a prison outside Rome today. He washed the feet of inmates as he has done nearly every year of his pontificate. Gesù fa questo gesto, lavare i piedi. Fa un gesto da schiavo, lui che aveva tutto il potere, lui che era il Signore, fa il gesto di schiavo. Vuole che il Vescovo lo faccia tutti gli anni, una volta all'anno almeno per giovedì santo, per imitare il gesto di Gesù e anche per fare, fare bene con l'esempio anche a lui stesso, perché il Vescovo non è il più importante, il Vescovo deve essere il più servitore. Earlier today, Francis celebrated the Holy Thursday Chrism Mass at the Vatican's St. Peter's Basilica. A large number of priests renewed their vows during the liturgy. The Holy Father talked about Christ's relationship with crowds and reminded the clergy that they are part of the crowd and must serve the people. On Holy Thursday, the Church recalls the institution of the priesthood. On this Holy Thursday, we're joined by a man who has brought together two very different worlds. Stephen Auth is a chief investment officer at one of the countries 
country's largest investment firms, but he is also a Catholic missionary who's out on the streets of New York trying to entice fallen away Catholics to rediscover their faith. He is the author of The Missionary of Wall Street, From Managing Money to Saving Souls on the Streets of New York. Stephen, thank you so much. Welcome. What an endeavor thank you've you taken up. <laughs> <laughs> this is not easy. And not many people actually would even think that the intersection of Wall Street and faith is a likely combination. So what inspired you? Well, I I don't know that I was inspired, Liz. I was called to it. I, I got a call uh, about 10 years ago from my wife, who had gotten a call from the pastor down at Old St. Pat's mm -hmm. that he was looking for someone to lead this mission out into the streets of New York, you know, his parish, very secular neighborhood down yeah. there in Soho. And of course, my natural response was, no, no way, no <laughs> how, this will never work. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, and here we are. A few the, months later, there I was. The rest, as they yeah. say, is, is history for now, right? Because I, I want to know, are people even responsive to your efforts at saving souls? Are they willing to even listen as they're, they're rushing past you on the streets of New York? Uh, some are. Uh, they, you know, the, the thing is, that's where they are, the fallen away Catholics. Right. And uh, like I like to say to the missionaries, uh, we make it up on Vine. We, 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 we've talked to three million people now on the streets. Wow. And we run 40 to one of someone who'll actually stop and, and, and talk with us. Mm -hmm. But that's all you need. You got large volumes. We've brought, we think, 15,000 people back to the mm -hmm. sacrament of confession. Why is this so important? Why is it so important for Catholics in any secular metropolitan city to rediscover their faith? Th this is what makes people joyful in the end, right? We've caught, when we're falling away from the church, mm -hmm. we actually start to develop our own rules and we develop walls between ourselves and God. And what we're trying to do is help people find their way back over the wall. Since we're talking about um, redefining our faith and hope, what was your reaction to this week's tragic fire uh, at Notre Dame in Paris? Uh, I was in tears. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like whenever I go to Paris, the Cathedral is one of the first places I go. Uh, it's spe such a special place. And I think people uh, not of faith maybe don't fully understand why the people from the Middle Ages built those cathedrals. Mm -hmm. They have these beautiful walls of stained glass that create a, a sense of heaven on earth, which is what the Mass is. And it was a way of communicating that. So to watch it go up in flames. We had, uh, we were out on Monday night uh, on the streets mm -hmm. and we had a French family come by and we were all crying it, it and was, praying together. It was absolutely uh, devastating. Uh, for the cathedral. Yeah, but yeah. Um, hope lives. They're doing their best to make sure that it's rebuilt. Right, they'll, and, they'll rebuild. And I'm sure they will. They I will thank Liz. you so much. It thank was great you, to get your perspective on, on all things Catholic this yeah. week. Thank you so much for joining us, Stephen Off. And the book, once again, is The Missionary of Wall Street From Managing Money to Saving Souls on the Streets of New York. What a great idea. I will be sure to read this. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. And stay with us. We'll be right back. Tens of thousands of new Catholics are being welcomed into the church this Easter season. More than 37,000 people are expected to celebrate the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ at vigil masses around the country. Some of the largest Catholic dioceses, such as Los Angeles and Houston, will each admit over 1,500 new members. The candidates or catechumens will receive baptism, confirmation, and first communion as part of the vigil masses. In the Brooklyn Diocese, more than 1,000 Catholics are expected to join. Close to half of them will receive all three sacraments at the Easter Vigil. Those who have already been baptized will only receive Confirmation and the Eucharist. That is Currents News. Please make note that tomorrow Currents News will air at a special time, 6.30 p.m. We will be followed by live coverage of Pope Francis and the Way of the Cross from Rome's Colosseum at 7 p.m. I'm Liz Fobles. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.